With a show of hands, who here has ever tried to grow a plant before? That's good. I see lots of hands. And that's OK. If you've never tried before, maybe something that I say here today will encourage you. So the way that I see it, there's two types of people in this world, plant people and those who know plant people. I see myself as a plant person, but it's more than just a hobby or a future profession. It's a lifestyle. When you're able to plant a seed and grow something, it really changes you. And I've learned a lot about patience, commitment, perseverance, and learning from my mistakes through my experience as a gardener. But I would like to make a confession. I am a plant serial killer, y'all. <laughs> and I'm sure some of you are too. And that's OK. This is a safe zone. I feel like if I thought back on all of the plants that I've ever had, majority of them are dead. And that's probably why people think that they're a bad gardener. Think about it this way. If you were a doctor and majority of your patients died, you'd probably lose your license and go to jail. But just because you may forget to water your plants every once in a while or water them a bit too much or any of the other mistakes that new gardeners make, as long as you're educating yourself, going through lots of trial and error, keeping a journal and probably even a calendar to stay on track, you'll become a better gardener every single day. In my experiences, tinkering around in my garden before I came here to start my formal education in plant and soil science really set the foundation for me to be the gardener that I am here today. So I would like to challenge you. I think that having a green thumb is a myth because people would say that to me all the time. You have such a green thumb. I wish I was like you. But they didn't know about the plant cemetery that I had hiding behind the windowsill in my bedroom. So I would like to encourage you all by sharing one lesson that I have learned painstakingly over these last couple of years. And that lesson is, the plant material that you select to grow in your garden really does matter. Now that sounds like a no-brainer. If you want to grow tomatoes, buy a tomato plant. But what if I told you that some tomatoes grow better here in Huntsville than they do in Austin? That would be a game changer, right? Selecting the plants that grow best in your region is one of the keys to your success as a gardener. The USDA has organized the country into about 10 or so different regions based on the annual average cold temperatures in those areas. And that's very useful information. We're trying to figure out which plants will be able to tolerate your winters and survive the summers, especially here in Houston when it gets really, really hot. I mean, here in Huntsville when it gets really, really hot. So here in Huntsville, we're in zone 8B. So remember that next time you go plant shopping. And in fact, native plants are actually able to establish more robust root systems than non-native plants, which, is a, which allows them to absorb more water, root, reach a lot deeper with their roots, and it means that you won't have to water them as much as non-native plants. So I try to grow native plants whenever I can because they also encourage pollinators and local wildlife. So once I started growing native plants in my garden, I began to see a lot more success. My plants were growing, staying a lot alive a lot longer, and it really boosted my self-esteem because I was working with nature instead of against nature. But I wouldn't have been able to appreciate that struggle if I hadn't gone, if I, that progress, if I hadn't gone through the struggle of taking plants out of their happy habitats bringing them to a new area, and then not giving them what they needed to survive and being so shocked and hurt when they would die. I mean, all of these exotic tropical plants are all the rage now, but you can't bring that into your house without a humidifier because that's what they like. They like warm, cool temperatures. So I would be buying plants and they would die and I would cry and it would be really sad and I feel like I wasted a lot of money, but then, I had a thought. 
all of that time and energy and money wasn't really a waste. It was an investment in myself because I learned a lot and I learned what not to do. So if I had let those setbacks keep me from continuing as a gardener, I wouldn't be here today. And it's allowed me to realize that I want to go into landscape architecture when I graduate. So the plants that we choose to put into our environments affect its biodiversity and health, just like the food that we put into our bodies affect us as humans. So it's important for us with each landscaping and gardening choice that we make to be responsible, to educate ourselves, to take interest in the things that we see around us so that we can make responsible choices. I had to realize it wasn't just about what plant I thought was pretty or what was on sale when I went to the store. That didn't mean that I needed to bring it home without giving it what it needed. So if you're interested in gardening for the first time or thinking about bringing picking it back up again, here's your sign, y'all. Being able to eat something that I grew from a seed has been one of the most rewarding experiences of my life. And I want all of you to have that too. And there's lots of resources out there for new gardeners and veteran gardeners alike, like the Lady Bird Johnson Wildflower Center, whose website has tons of databases to help you find different plants from different regions, and if you go visit them in person in Austin, you can get more information there too. And another resource is the Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. And their website has so much information, I could probably never go through it all myself. Or you can contact your local extension agent today. And one last thing that I'm so happy that I did was join my local county master gardeners association. Being able to experience and learn alongside Veteran Master Gardeners has been an invaluable experience. I made tons of friends, learned about new plants, and was able to get practical experience while being active in my community. So go out there and grow something. Don't be afraid to fail because you'll learn tons of lessons along the way. And besides, all the plants you kill will just be good composting material anyway. So don't be afraid to fail, and don't be afraid to try something new. Because being a gardener has made me a better person, and it's allowed me to be here sharing all of this with you.